unveiling our heritage of total health in Christ. Unveiling our heritage of total health in Christ as in a teaching series, part 2B. Unveiling our heritage of total health in Christ. Now, listen to me. If you are not healthy, you cannot be restful. If you are not healthy, you cannot be restful. Rest is secured in good health. You're only healthy when there's rest around about you. When you lose your rest, it's because you're not healthy. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So understand this morning that our inheritance in Christ among us is total health. Total. When you hear total, it means 100%. No part of your life is a minus. Not even your nose is having a challenge. Not even your, your hand. Total health. That is, you are sound spirit, soul, and body. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I would really suggest that you get first service CD. I am be sure it will be a blessing to you. And anyone watching online, Please believe that there is no distance in the realm of the spirit. As you are hearing this service, either online or on CD, expect same instant touch. What you need to hear is the word, not the person. The word you are hearing is God himself. That's why the man involved is not important. The sound involved is more important. The word you are hearing is what it is. Don't look at me. Looking at me make you, will make you to miss it. I can do nothing. I don't know. I'm nothing. Empty. God is the one doing everything you are hearing. And that God is the same one sounding. Everyone that is deaf in this service, watch it. Partial deafness, mid partial deafness, acute deafness, no, chronic deafness, watch it. Anyone deaf in this service, either partial, I rebuke the spirit of deafness in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Anyone here that cannot hear, before this service ends, your ear will pop open by the power in the world. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please believe. Every sickness and disease, when I mean every, I mean every. I mean every. Every means not leaving anyone out. In these recent weeks, we have recorded dangerous testimonies. Cancer, HIV, kidney, blindness, ah. It's a sign that God is here. No doubt about it. That's what people use money to buy. To see a pastor for. See pastor. To see Jesus. They don't, they don't. I mean, see Jesus anyhow. I'm not a pastor. But believe the Lord your God shall be established. Believe his promise so shall you prosper. In this service, you will see Jesus removing that sickness. Removing that disease. Removing that evil. Removing that poison. Removing that growth. Removing that blood disease. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. HIV will disappear as if it never existed. Amen. Blood disease will disappear on the spot. Amen. Everything making you to shed tears in the secret will turn to open celebration. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Quickly, this morning, I'd like you to know that there's power in the communion table. We are engaging the communion table for our long life. For health, vitality, and longevity. And I'd like you to know this morning that the communion is the bread from heaven defined as meat. The communion is the bread from heaven that is divined as meat. It is superior to the manna in the wilderness. Psalm 105, verse 37. Psalm 105, verse 37. The Bible says that he brought them forth also with silver and gold, and there was none that was feeble among their tribes. And if you look at John chapter 6, verse 50 to 51, Talking about my my either eating my flesh shall live by me. Verse 57. 
when you eat the bread, the Bible says he took the bread. He said, this is my flesh. This is my flesh. So when you eat the bread, you are eating the flesh of Jesus. When you eat the flesh, you are eat, I mean the bread, you are eating the flesh of Jesus. Verse 53. He said, Then he said unto them, Very nice unto you, except ye eat the flesh of some man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. So what we eat, we eat this thing is not bread, it's not flake, it's the flesh of Jesus. It is superior to the man in the wilderness. It is superior to angels' food. Psalm 78, verse 25. It is superior to angels' food. Psalm 78, verse 25. And if you check it out, the Bible says, for he established a testimony. No, 25, not verse 5. 78, 25. If you look at it, it says, man did eat angels' food and he sent them meat to the full. That is, they, listen to me now, look at this analysis. They ate this manna and they trekked for 40 years and they were not feeble. Understand the revelation. They ate angels' food for 40 years and they were not weak. They were trekking, no car. They were trekking. In fact, the Bible says their leg, their, the, the, I mean, their foot did not wear out. 40 solid years, not 40 weeks, not 40 months. To let you know what is in this thing. And what we are talking about is this superior to the one they ate for 40 years. They ate this food for 40 years and they didn't, and none was feeble. As a matter of fact, Psalm 103, verse 20 talks about angels excel in strength. Angel, they excel in strength. Bless the Lord, these angels that excel in strength. They are so powerful. Which means, after taking this communion, you are stronger than angels. Yeah. It's not a prayer. It's understanding. Understand it. After eating this communion, you are stronger than angels. Because angels have the food that makes them excel in strength. And that was what Israel ate for 40 solid years and they were trekking and they were not feeble. Feeble means they were not weak. And this meal is superior to it. What an opportunity. What a revelation. Not only that, this mystery makes you to live like Christ. John 6, 57. He that eateth me shall live by me. Ah, what a scripture. Live by me. By me. Which means you are now in the class of Jesus. You will now cut. And this Jesus we're talking about is Jesus glorified. Jesus glorified. You will live by him. Therefore, excess cannot be your portion. HIV cannot be your portion. Cancer cannot be your portion. Let it enter your spirit, man. You can never be sick. No hospital can accept Jesus. Jesus is sick. Is it possible? You say it's not possible. So why are, you, why are you sick? After you eat this communion, sickness is deleted in your diary. Yeah. After you partake of this communion, even right now, everything sick in your body is giving way to health in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Quickly, let's explore the wonders in the communion. From John chapter 6, 48 to 58. In verse 50, John 6, verse 50, the Bible says that a man may eat thereof and not what? Die. The man may eat and not what? Die. Which means after you eat this communion, no death again. I didn't write it now. He wrote it. After this communion, let them shoot you. Bullet to turn back to kill the person. Yes. You won't have accident, though. But if the devil successfully makes you to have accident, let the car crash. 
Something will carry you to your bed and sit down. As in, you are so immune that you can't die again. Nothing. You can't. You become a spirit. This communion transforms you from mortal to immortal. That is, you become untouchable by spirits. That's the meaning. In the, in, Jesus is a spirit. Think about it. Now, let me analyze it to you. When he appeared to his disciples, he said, I don't believe until I touch the O. Okay, come and touch. And he touched. <laughs> this is a mystery now. He touched the O. He said, blessed are those who see me not and believe at me. Fine. But in that touch, they touch him and yet he still ascended to heaven. With that same body. You are now a spirit when you eat this communion. That is, you... Devil cannot go near you. Not because... Not because you, you are not... I mean, not because it's, impos it's impossible, but because it's unthinkable. Like I said in the first service, a man will never imagine I'm pregnant. In the same way, never imagine you can die. Don't even think it. Let it not be your thought pattern that I can die. Death is deleted from your agenda. Yeah. Colossians 3, verse 2. Let's read together. Colossians 3, verse 2. It says, set your affections on the things above, not on the things on the earth. Verse 3. It says, for ye are dead. Your life is hid with Christ in God. Ah. Your life. Your life. Your life. Your life. Your life is hid. I like this illustration I usually do. This is your life. This is your life. And this Christ is hid with Christ inside God. Your life is hid with Christ in God. He that will touch you, look at me. They can't see you again. You can't, they can't see you, they can't see Jesus. If they can kill God, they can kill you. But whatever cannot kill God cannot touch you. Your life is hid with Christ inside God. Ah! Never imagine death again around you. After you eat this communion, start imagining life forever life forever. The only thing that can kill you is rapture. Except rapture. And rapture is not dead. Rapture is the end. Your life is hid with Christ inside God. Let them take your name to a sangoma. They will blow together. Let them put muti on your seat. As they are putting it, they will die on the spot. Yeah. Not because you know, but because they want your inside. is too big for them. Yeah. Your life is hid with Christ in God. Say, my life yeah. is hid yeah. with Christ yeah. in God. Yeah. My life yeah. is hid yeah. with Christ yeah. in God. Yeah. Therefore, I am unkillable. Yeah. It is said that one way. Say, therefore, I am unkillable. Glory to God. I say, glory to God. That a man may eat and not die. Verse 51. To further validate this scripture we just quoted now, John 6 51. He that eateth shall live forever. Shall live forever. Shall live forever. John chapter 6. Verse 51. I'm the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eats of this bread, he shall live what? He shall live what? Say bye bye to death. Say bye bye to death. Say bye bye to death. You and your family will not die till Jesus comes. You want to say, okay, God, I want to die now. Let me die. That is, after you have lived for minimum 120, you choose to die because you want to die. Not for suicide's sake, mm -mm. not for tension or pressure, 
But because God, it's time, I've tried. I'm now 125. So what am I looking for again? God, let me go, let me go and rest. That is, you are so satisfied. Satisfied. Satisfied with good old age. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Shall live forever. Verse 53. Except ye eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Scriptures are not mistakes. Except, when you hear except, it means no alternative. No option. No second chance. Except he eat the life, the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, he have no life in you. That's why before you eat this thing, you must first accept Jesus. Genuinely so and sincerely so. Unwavingly, undwindling, rigid and standing for him. Accept, he eat and drink. He have no life in you. That's why when I'm when by privilege we make other call, please rush and surrender to Jesus. Let him be the Lord. And let him be the law of your life. Let him be the Lord, L O R D. And let him be the law of your life. Therefore, you become the Lord over situations. When he becomes the Lord, he becomes your law. When he becomes your law, you become a Lord. When he becomes the Lord over your life, then he becomes a law that guides your life. Then you become a Lord to situations. But first, accept him as your Lord. Then, his law governs your life. Then, you become a Lord over situations of life. Glory to God. I say glory to God. I say glory to God. So, we share his life through the communion. We share his life through the communion. We share his life through the communion. But how? Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11. He says the life of the flesh is in the blood. Which means when you drink this blood, you are eating his life. You are eating his life. And I said something in first service, which let me repeat here. Every time you are eating the, anything you are eating, call it the flesh and the blood of Jesus Christ. Anything you eat, anything you eat, call it the flesh and the blood of Jesus Christ. Anything. Matthew chapter 26, verse 26. To give you this, by the grace of God, better understanding. Look at it. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread. As they were doing what? They were doing what? The next phrase showed, I mean, shows what they were eating. So, for maybe our new members or even old members who may not understand what communion is, what you call communion is, what you call the blood of Jesus Christ is whatever you call it. As they were eating. If they were to be eating sparkle that day, he would say, Jesus took sparkle. I'm telling you raw life, direct. Bread was the menu for that day. Maybe it was breakfast. No, they take bread for breakfast. Now, maybe it was bread, menu bread, breakfast. Now, the Bible says, as they were eating, he took bread. If they were eating macaroni or indomie, you would have said, Jesus took indomie. Please understand, he took indomie. He took, so whatever is eatable that is godly, analyzed, underlined. He took bread and he said, he, break, he blessed it and break it and gave the He said, take, this is what my body. What we are eating now is the body. The body, the flesh of Jesus. And he that eateth me, remember, 657, shall live by me. Shall live by me. And 26, that same verse, 27, and he took up, gave thanks, gave it to them, and saying, drink all of it, for this is what? My blood of the new covenant. It took drink. It took drink, the cup. Ah, 
and say drink all of it. Any good thing that is drinkable, not alcohol, not beer, not smell of. Don't go and take a call and say, Father, Pastor, thank you very much. <laughs> you have said anything I drink now is the blood of Jesus Christ. You know, some people are very, very smart. They think you are smart. You take it as poison. I'm telling you, don't take Ogogoro and say, Father, Rushkaba Ragadaba. You ragadaba yourself to hellfire. He took drink. Cup. So he's not, he's not taking a call. The fruit juice. You don't take. They say, Pastor, it's just 5%. It's the, even 1%. Please, honor Jesus. And be sincere with yourself. He took drink. I said, this is my blood. I decree from today, as you eat anything you eat, and you call it the flesh, you will live forever in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now listen to me. This is a mystery. Every time you eat is a time of immunization. With this revelation, every time you eat is a moment of immunization. Ah, which means if you are eating every day, you can't be sick anyhow. If you are eating this thing with this revelation, by privilege, this has been the mystery for my 17 years of not taking medication. Because you cannot be taking medication every day and not be well. With every eating time is a moment of injection. You have been over injected. We take this thing Wednesday, we take it on Sunday. We take it on... Some people, it's not routine. It doesn't make any difference. Please understand every time you take, you eat from today. You are taking divine immunity against every sickness, against every disease. What an opportunity to be free from sickness forever. With this revelation, you can never be sick again. Never, 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 never. The sickness that will come your way, the immunization you took in the morning has settled it. Every of your menu is a communion from today. Glory to God. I say glory to God. I say glory to God. Because of time. Now, let's examine the three-dimensional bam in the communion. Three-dimensional bam in the communion. I'll just talk about one. In third service, I'll talk about the other two parts. It is the source of all-round health and vitality. John 6, 58. Three-dimensional bam in the communion. It is the source of all-round health and vitality. The Bible says, this is the bread, listen now, which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna, and are dead. He that eateth this bread shall live forever. Which means it imparts on our soul, spirit, and body. So I will talk about having a healthy spirit. Second and third service, I mean third service talk about soul and um, body. A healthy spirit. First Thessalonians 523. So, this communion imparts on our spirit. And the very God of peace sanctify you holy. I pray, your, I pray God, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved. So, with communion, we have a healthy spirit. Say healthy spirit. And sin is a sickness of the spirit. Understand that. Ezekiel 18 verse 4. Sin is a sickness of the spirit. Before you lied, your spirit has lied. Behold, all souls are mine. And the souls of the father, so also the soul of the son is mine. The soul that sinned shall die. Before your body went to commit fornication, your spirit allowed it. Before your body masturbated, your spirit thought of it. Before you stole, your spirit thought of it. So sin is a sickness of the spirit. And when you take communion, your spirit is renewed. Your spirit is transformed. You remember sin, you hate it with passion. It irritates you naturally. But the blood is the spiritual cure for sin. Hebrews 9, 13 to 14. Hebrews 9, 13 to 14, and verse 21. For the blood of bulls and the goats and the ashes of Ipha sprinkling the unclean, sanctifying unto the purifying of the flesh. Verse 14. 
how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without a spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? So when you take communion, it purges you. And verse 21 says, Moreover, they sprinkle, sprinkle with the blood, with but both the tabernacles and all the vessels of the ministry. Verse 22. Verse 22. And almost all things are by the law purged with the blood. So when you take the communion, it purges your spirit. It's cleansing you of the whole pornography that your brain has taught. It cleanses the demonic thoughts of robbery that you have been thinking. It erases the thoughts of suicide mission. Glory to God. And the blood is shed for our remission of sin. Matthew 26, 26, 28. And the blood is God's last card in a battle against sin. So as you take this blood, it fights the devil out of your life. And lastly, the blood has power to terminate every bad habit. Every habit you have been struggling to stop. Through this blood, you shall be set free in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. For example, in the book called Miracle Meal, there is a testimony of the man with an unclean spirit, a man that after finishing his meal, himself vomits, and after that, he eats it back. You can check it, page 68 to 71, Miracle Meal. His name is Danamudo. After vomiting, he eats again. He's a demonic spirit. We are not a ruminant animal. Only ruminant animals regurgitate. It's a spirit. It's a spirit. But it takes the blood to be free. For example, now you masturbate, not because you want to, but something pushes your hand. Not because you want to watch pornography, but something pushes you. You don't like fornication, but something pushes you. It's a spirit. As you take his blood, you'll be free forever in the name of Jesus Christ. Because of time. Today is our kind of um, long life. I'd like you to know that long life is a product of your revelation. Long life is a product of your revelation. Genesis chapter 13, 14 to 15. The Bible says that God spoke to Abraham. He said, look northward, look southward, look eastward, look westward. As far as your eyes can see. As far as your eyes can see. So, if you can see 30 years, that's your choice. If all you can see is 50 years, that's your choice. So, your level of understanding determines where you stand in long life. Proverbs 21 verse 16. The man that wandered out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So, if you don't understand a long life is your portion, then you die on time. You must understand that has paid the price for your death. Think about it. David saw 70. David saw 70. Psalm 90, verse 10. David said, okay, oh, 70 is number of days of a man. Psalm 90, verse 10. The days of years are three score and ten. And if by reason, if I try, if I try, if I try, you make it 80. And look at it. He died at 70. First Chronicles 29, 26 to 28. He died at 70. First Chronicles 29, 26. The Bible says, Wherefore David blessed, then David, son, son of Jesse, reigned over Israel, and he reigned for 40 years. Now, 40 years, how? Seven years he reigned in Hebron, 33 years he reigned in Jerusalem. However, David started reigning at Eshtati. Second Samuel chapter 5, verse 4. 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 4. David started reigning at 30. And he died. Now look at it. David was 30 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned for 40 years. So David lived for 70 years. Because he said he saw 70 years. By scriptural analysis, what you see is what you achieve. Now, on the other hand, look at Moses. Moses saw 120. Genesis chapter 6, verse 3. God was saying through Moses. And he says, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not more strive with man, for it shall also, is also his flesh, and yet his day shall be 120 years. And Moses was still active at 120. Deuteronomy 34, verse 7. 
The Bible says, and Moses was 120. Moses was 120 years old when he died. And his eyes was not dim. At 120, sir. At 120, not at 12. Not at under 17. At 120, his eyes were not dim. The Bible is not a lie. So, what you see is what you are being given. Glory to God. What can you see? 70, 40, 50, 30. What you see is what God give. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. However, understand. Scriptures establish that serving God is a covenant platform for long life. Serving God. Serving God. Exodus 23, 23 verse 25. Thou shalt serve the Lord your God, shall bless your blood and bless your water, and take away sickness from the midst of thee. He said, none shall cast thy young. He said, no, don't be barren in the land. And the number of your days, I, the Lord, will fulfill. So, scriptures makes us understand that serving God secures for you long life. Long life. Long life. Long life. So when you serve God, you enjoy longevity. And the long life God gives is with prosperity. If they will obey and serve him, they will live their days in prosperity. Job 36 verse 11. They will live their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. So when God gives long life, he gives prosperity. So you are not alive to suffer. You are alive to enjoy. You're not alive to carry a wheelbarrow. You're not alive to be, to be begging at 60, waiting for your children's uh, salary before you can eat. That's not God's plan. You're not to be at old age and be begging. No. Long life and prosperity. That shall be your portion. Yeah. So your service unto God services your life for longevity. Malachi 3, 17 to 18. And they shall serve, and they shall be mine. Said the Lord of hosts, In the day I will make my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spared his own son that served him. Then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that served God and him that served him not. So your service is what enhances your living in longevity. So if you serve him, then you live long. Glory to God. But mind you, we must make a demand for long life in prayers. Psalm 91 verse 15. The Bible says, He shall call upon me and I will answer him. That's the song the choir sang. And I will be with him in trouble and I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him. He shall call upon me. This morning, someone will call upon God and death toll in your life shall cease in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Shall cease in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. But mind you, the good news is this. Our spiritual fathers live long. Abraham lived for 175 years. 175 years. Genesis 25 verse 8. Isaac lived for 180 years. Genesis 35 verse 28 to 29. 180 years. 180 years. 180 years. And the days of Isaac were 104 score. First score means 80. 180 years. Even Moses, the one I mentioned, 120 years. Look at it, one something, one something. Even Jacob, 147 years. Genesis 47, verse 28. So, and these are our fathers. I like you to know, you have no right to die on time. No. There was one statement I heard from God in the morning, which I also want to reiterate here again this morning. You are a product of the ancient of days. You are not expected to die at a tender age. I heard it from God directly. You are a product of the ancient of days. You are not expected to die at a tender age. Say after me, I am a product of the ancient of days. I am not permitted to die at a tender age. Say one more time with conviction. I am a product of the ancient of days. 
I am not permitted to die at the tender age. So shall it be. Say it for the last time now with a deep understanding of unkillable spirit. I am a product of the ancient of days. I am not permitted to die at the tender age. So shall it be. 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 Quickly, just one or two points. To enjoy long life. You must be committed to speaking right words. Right words. Proverbs 18.21, the Bible says, Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Yeah, but whoa, then you are dead. I'm dying, I'm dying. Then you are dying, you surely die. You said it yourself now. Ah, even God cannot stop it because you have given the approval. What does not warrant death? People just say it anyhow. I see you are talking about children. Death is a spirit. If you say it, you see it. For no reason. Should you say nonsense? Otherwise, you see nonsense. Life and death and the power of the tongue. So, be committed to speaking right words, not deadly words. Now, Psalm 34, verse 12. What, listen now. What man is he that desires life and love many days, that he may see good? Listen now. Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking like guy. Which means if you want to live long, speak well. Speak right. Don't speak death when you want to see life. Call of time. Free from the fear of death. Free yourself from the fear of death. When you are scared of death, you'll be ensnared by death. When you are scared by death, you'll be ensnared by death. Fear has torment. Fear is, you know, like a cage. It can track you down and cage your life. Job chapter 6. Job chapter 3, verse 24. Job 3, 24. For my signs come before I eat, and my runners are poured out like waters. For the thing which I greatly feared has come upon me. Whatever you fear is what you attract. <laughs> then it catches you. Once fear can catch you, death has caught you. So flee from fear of death. Flee from fear of death. Time. Number three. Be committed to a giving lifestyle. Give us, live long. Give us, live long. Those who are stingy, they die on time. I'm telling you. Look at it now. When you hold yourself, hold everything tight, tight. Pressure will kill you. <sighs> No, no, no. Ah, ah, what is it now? Ah, kilo day, you want the corny? Ah. You hold tight as if they must not go. Some people, no 10 rand can drop from there. 10 rand. She, she can't drop. Cry nothing. He said, No, I'm sorry. And he has 100 rand. He said, No, I'm sorry. Ah. <laughs> you see, when you are stingy, it qualifies for quick death. You know the reason? When you're a giver, the people you are giving, they are releasing prayer for you every day. Lord, my Lord, God will preserve you for us. God will preserve you for us. God, even if not because of your righteousness, because of their prayers, God will preserve you. I'm telling you, when you are a giver, you live long. Even those who are saying, Bambi, Allah, when they are saying it, <laughs> as they are saying it, their spirit is blessing you. But when you are not a giver, Everything will be tight on you. They take it. <clears throat> Even your blood pressure will be increasing. <laughs> because every time you hear money goes, ah, who took it? <laughs> Before you know it, <laughs> just pay me. <laughs> be, 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 be careful. When you are a giver, you live longer. Yes. When, but when you are stingy, eh, that stinginess is what will kill you. Think about it. Abraham was a die-hard giver. And the giving we're talking about here majorly is your titan. Because among others, give to poor, give to church, give to whatever, give is fine. But there is one that makes you a covenant practitioner, which is your titan. When you give your tithe, you sign a covenant. Titan is a covenant practice. 
as you as you give your tithe, you have signed for operation devourer being rebuked. He said Malachi 3 8. When you don't give your tithe, you are a robber. When you rob God of tithe, devil will rob you of life. When you rob God of tithe, devil is being given permission to rob you of life. Malachi 3 8 and verse 11. He said, And I will rebuke the devourer. Which means if you don't pay your tithe, I will allow the devourer. To devour means to kill, to eat. So when you don't pay your tithe, you have permitted the devourer to take your life. Let's be now, time is gone. Be on now. And tell God, Lord, this morning I enter into this covenant of giving and I receive grace to enjoy longevity. Lift up your voice and pray. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. In summary, understand this. By virtue of your redemption, longevity is your portion. That's one. Foundational. Fundamental. But to now maintain it, to sustain it, keep serving him. To maintain it, to sustain it, speak right words. Even though you are not supposed to die, if you say I will die, then God, you have given God permission to allow the devil to kill you. Even though you are not supposed to be sick, but because I have said it, you have allowed sickness. And number three, giving lifestyle. Make sure your tithe is not changing. You are not giving it to me. I don't collect it. As you give it to God, you have right over your life. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. From today, you will be operating millions as if you are operating in zero. When I mean zero, you know that some people, they travel to UK as if they are going to the kitchen. They go to UK and say, ah, how do you get to UK? I'm coming. UK, or they say, kitchen or UK? Say UK. It's because it's zero. It's nothing to them. They spend millions as if they are spending 100 rand. It's a level, and you are entering that level from today. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Look at the testimony of that brother. He said, now every week I have million. Every week. Imagine, having a million every week. And you, to get 1,000 per day, per, per, per month, you are still struggling. 1,000 per month, million per week. Compare. No comparison. But this morning, your story is changing. Yeah. This morning, your story is changing. Amen. The good news is this. You are receiving longevity with prosperity. Amen. Longevity with prosperity. Amen. Quickly, before Patek of the Communion this morning, you are here, you are not saved. Remember, either eat of me shall live by me. If you don't eat of him, if you don't have him, you must first receive his person. As many that received him, then he gave, I mean, uh, then he gave, as, as many as receiving them, you give power because of God. Even those who believe on His name, you want to be saved? Please come up this morning and let Jesus take over your life. You are here, just step out. You want to be saved? You want Christ in your life? All oh, better still. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus? Join, join this, my brother, right now and let mercy, His grace, from extension, from the gallery, from the temple, from the overflow, just step out. You want Jesus in your life, genuinely and genuinely so. Not because they are saying it, but because you know you need it. Mind you, if you are not in Christ, you are a victim for the devil to be eaten. Therefore, you are here, you know you are not saved, and you want Jesus in your life. Remember, this is an opportunity to escape. This salvation call is an escape route. You are here, you want Christ. Don't deceive yourself. You know your stand. You know your stand. You need Christ, you need Jesus. Just step out. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Heaven is celebrating. Heaven is rejoicing. Heaven is happy. Even God, your maker, is excited. Until you are saved, you stand a chance to be caged. Until you are saved, you cannot enjoy his grace. Until you are saved, you can't enjoy the mercy of God. The mercy of God is for everybody, but majorly for those who are saved. However, you are here. You used to be very hot in Christ, but now you are as cold as ice block. You used to be very hot in Christ. Your prayer life is zero, minus, minus 20. But now you really want a revival in your spirit. Join them right now. You know you used to be very spiritual, but now you are so carnal. In fact, carnality is now your second name. 
You need Jesus, you need Christ. You are here. Just join them right now. Your prayer life is zero. When they say prayer, I say pray what? Because you don't even know what prayer is again. And it wasn't like that. But you want a renewal, a revival, a change, a big, a new beginning. Join them right now and let mercy, let grace come be sufficient for, sufficient for you this morning. Please keep coming. A round of applause for Jesus as they come. Mind you, I'm not just making mouth. I'm speaking the mind of God. I am speaking the mind of God. Jesus wants you saved and rescue you from the cage of life. The cage upon yourself will never be broken until Jesus enters your life. So this morning, from the journey, journey right now. While I pray for you, my brothers and sisters, I like others to say, Father, as I eat of this flesh and this blood, I'm rescued from destruction. I'm rescued from death. I'm rescued forever. Lift up your voice and pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Those in the front, take your right hand on your chest. And close your eyes and say after me, say Jesus. With a loud voice, say Jesus. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. Forgive me my sins. Wash me clean with your blood. Write my name in the book of life. I believe you died. And on the third day, you rose again. That I might be justified. That I might be justified. Right now, I'm saved. I'm delivered from the power of sin to serve the living God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. Lord, I pray for my dear brothers and sisters and your sons and daughters. I decree from today, they are saved and free from the cage of sin in the name of Jesus Christ. From today, it's a new day for you. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Look at me, everybody. As this flesh of Jesus touches your taste board, expect electric shock to remove every demonic oppression. Demonic oppression. Every heart problem. Every kidney problem. Liver problem. Eye problem. Hearing problem. Disease. Blood disease. Bone disease. Whatever disease. Expect a sudden change. Right now. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we decree and declare that this is not flesh, this is not juice, but the flesh and the blood of Jesus Christ. As your sons and daughters partake of this, there shall be instant healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Emotional disease, physical disease, body disease, career disease, business disease, whatever disease or sickness is healed in the name of Jesus Christ. There shall be instant miracles. Instant healings, instant deliverances, instant healings in the name of Jesus Christ. 